Alright guys, welcome back to Ooknet. I'm trying to finish this game today, but it's longer than I thought it would be, okay? So, we have removed, you know, the kind of bent loose the jewel. So we're gonna use the cloth, because it's hot, apparently. Using the old canvas, the creature was able to pick up the hot gemstone. What we're gonna do use that with? I have no idea. Hmm. The small creature dared not to disturb the hazardous looking mushrooms. Yeah, I probably wouldn't have dared either. So now we've got a brush apparently, and um, let's check the fossil. Inside the cave wall, packed between dirt and rock, rested the remains of an ancient creature. So we're gonna play archaeologists. By carefully dusting around the fossil, the outermost layer of dirt around it came loose and accumulated in the creature's extended hand, revealing a set of bones sticking out from the cave wall. Right, let's... Let's rob the fossil of its bones. With the fossil uncovered and intact, the creature could easily pluck a couple of particularly pointy bones from it. Because, you know, that's normal. Oh my god, can you stop, please? Oh dear. Uh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Skeleton key. Quite literally. A skeleton key. As the key did not fit the hole, it fell apart as the small creature attempted to turn it. Damn it. So basically, what you're telling me is I have to do it in the correct order. <laughs> okay. The medium size. Let's see if this works. I mean, it's literally one chance in a million a that this will work. A stone casket crushed by the weight of the... Tr just... The creature reached inside the casket and pulled out a dusty old tome, bereaved of one of its pages. What am I even doing? As soon as the eye's radiant gaze met the ring, an intense beam of light shot out of the ring's jewel, disappearing into the ceiling. Suddenly, a shriek of agony could be heard from the cavern up above. So I'm, so I'm, I'm more or less, whatever, oh. My eyes, it burns. How is the wheel of heaven's wrath reaching us here? The slim-nosed troll shrieked, desperately trying to cover his eyes from the ray of light pointed at his face. Damn. Well, it's cursed, it's cursed. The fat nosed troll chanted, The hunger, the itching, only bad luck comes my way. Ever since I got this piece of glass, I can find nothing to eat in this damnable place. And now my whole body burns. No more! Be gone with you, foul thing! He screamed as he hurled his piece of the glass sphere onto the floor, quickly picked up by the small creature. Oh, I'm not gonna complain. And I guess I'm gonna take that one. And with uh, the troll distracted, who goes there? The slip. Ah, yeah, we don't care about that. I can't be bothered. And let's give him that one. The creature once more presented an offering before Burger Kangen. The tome immediately caught his eye. I recognize the runes on this book. It will surely unveil the true secrets of this place. Hand it over. Can't tell me what to do. The creature followed his command and gave Burger Kangen the old tome. Well, apparently can, but whatever. Um, it appears what I seek is indeed down in that hole. Bring it to me. There should be a way. Take this glass shard. It might be a key part in this. Make haste, little creature. My patience is growing thin. I imagine the rage when you discover that your tail has been cut. 
That would be amazing. Oh, it's disappeared. That ought to be hot. A lone stag. Feeling the stalagmite. Okay. So I guess the only thing I can do now is this. What the hell is this puzzle? That looks exactly like something else. Well, that was easy. Out of the darkness, a crackling and glowing stone emerged, lighting up the cave with its overwhelming energy as it levitated calmly above the altar. That's amazing, I want it. In the center of the chamber, floating above an altar covered in rune carvings, was an askston. Formed as lightning strikes the earth, an askston is said to be infused with the power of its creator, rumored to have been used in ancient times to ward off the sky's thunder, as well as beckoning its rumbling. Well, that's cool and all, but what does that as do? As the creature got closer, sparks and cracks... Okay. Ooh, that's pretty. That's cool. Now what? Like that? Is that correct? As the creature emerged from the hole, it spotted the slim-nosed troll throwing the pendant on the ground, shattering it. Filthy craftsmen who can't even separate fool's gold from the real thing. If I find them, I shall give them a quick departure from their pathetic existence. Muttering and cursing, he turned back to rummage around in his treasure pile. Hey, there! Are you all right? The small creature exclaimed as the Alva emerged from the hole. She responded with a quick nod as she slowly stumbled over to rest on a nearby stone. Don't you worry. You stay there and regain your strength. I have a very big question. Why did I do this with the mushrooms? I have no idea. I have no idea whatsoever. I have absolutely no idea. What's happening? Because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I have no idea. What did I just do? I have no idea. What was the purpose of this? I don't I know if not. I've made the right decision, but I feel this is our last chance to get you wings. Let's head up, shall we? The small creature said to the Alva, who with a hearty nod once more crawled up behind its ear. I have no idea what I just did, but this is probably the end. This is probably the finale of the Let's Play. I hope. Perhaps. Potentially. Maybe. I don't know. At last. After all this time, it's within my reach, Burger Kungan proclaimed, looking at the Askston with hungry eyes. This, this is what we have been looking for? A stone? A piece of worthless rock? The slim-nosed troll spouted in anger, yet his words got drowned out by the fat-nosed troll's deep voice. It must be a special rock, right? What does it do? Burger Kungan began to explain in a calm, almost threatening voice. This, my brother, will keep us safe as the wheel in the heavens passes above our heads. It beckons and bends the mind of the dark clouds and the hammering they bring with them. He turned his attention to the small creature. Come now, little creature. Hand it over to me, Bugger Kungan commanded the small creature, seemingly hesitant to touch the crackling Askston directly himself. The small creature looked at the Alva and then back at Bugger Kungan. No, I will not. Did you not hear me, little imp? I said, bring it to me, Bugger Kungan roared, furious by the creature's refusal. No, you don't deserve to have it. I got a backbone. Oh my without god. A shred of hesitation. You dare defy me? I will crush you. I will crush you beneath my feet. 
and I will take the stone myself. Dirt under my feet is what you are, after all. Enraged, Burger Kungan began to twist and turn to free himself from the mountain's firm grasp. In his struggle, the cavern began to crumble, light breaking through the cracks forming in the ceiling. Oh shit, what's happening? No, not again. The light, stop moving! The slim-nosed troll exclaimed in panic, yet his words did not reach the troll king. The creature and Alva paused for a moment to watch as the sunlight turned the trolls into stone before making their way out of the chamber. Oh dear. It seems that whenever I go, wherever I go, I make the mountains fall down. That's how awesome I am, I am and I'm on 17 minutes. Passing through the Cameron Cutter Copper Gate, the creature glanced over its shoulder. Passing through the crumbling copper gate, the creature glanced over its shoulder. Right. Passing through the crumbling copper gate, the creature glanced over its shoulder, only to see a cold mountain wall, untouched by being and man alike, casting a calming shadow over the clearing. The weary pair, staggering along the forest path, slowly made their way through the thick brush. As it happened, ending upon a path different than the one that led them there. As they felt the rise of the ground, the dark trees grew less imposing, allowing a wonderful view to greet their arrival at the top of the hill. How beautiful! The small creature gasped. I think I'd like to remain here for a while, if you wouldn't mind. The Alva marveled at the sky as the creature carefully put her down on a slab beside it. I'm sorry for not being able to help you. I know I promised. The creature said with sad eyes kept at the muddy ground beneath its feet. That place wasn't at all what I'd hoped it to be. After remaining silent for a while, the creature nervously brought its eyes from the ground, greeted by the Alva's beaming smile. For although she could not speak, nor fly, her glow appeared brighter than before. As they sat there looking out across the woods, the creature felt at ease, and embraced by the sun's rays breaking through the treetops, it slowly faded as night made way for dawn. The Alva remained, humming a sad melody while looking at the stone now sitting beside her. The song filled the clearing, and as she took the last note, a glowing pair of beautiful wings had appeared on her back. Looking at the stone one last time, eyes filled with gratitude. She then rose from the ground, disappearing amongst the tree's canopies. I just realized, when I lowered the music, I lowered the voices of these. And that, my friend, is where this story ends. Make of it what you will this darkest of nights, be it truth or myth, I have but shared with you what was long ago told to me in the glow of a fire such as this one. I only hope that you'll take care where you trod this night, for, as the story goes, it turns out, even a small, in the scope of the world, insignificant creature can be of significance to someone not that significant themselves. Well, that was pretty dumb of them. I mean, with the music. Because that's dialogue, that's not music. I wish they have had separate audio tracks for that. I'll try to erase this and end the post-editing. But if that's not the case, then I do apologize. I wasn't aware that it was going to be like that.
I usually, I lowered the volume in game because it was so freaking loud and it was so hard. But I do not expect it to be lowered like in the after text and that kind of pissed me off. But anyway, this was Oknit. This was the finale. This was the end. Of, this was the end episode and um, for all of those who have stick, stuck by me <laughs> during this let's play, I thank you because it's taking a long time. It was an interesting game and I do recommend it to try to play it yourself if you desire it. Um, <laughs> vote on another let's play if you want. Uh, I need I need suggestions. I will be trying to get still life going a bit more. Uh, I haven't really done a lot as of now when I'm recording it. But I'm sure that we'll get there, you know. But anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of whatever it is I make. Bye for now.